from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English, an educational support program for intermediate English learners. It's a program for people from all language backgrounds, and Ramping Up Your English, as well as for people of all ages. If you've already passed the beginning stages of learning English, and you want to reach higher levels of English proficiency, this program is designed to meet your needs. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher levels of English proficiency. Our current thematic unit is Animals, and this is segment one of episode 38. So far, we featured some familiar animals in this unit. The word familiar in English means well-known, and it's no accident that we begin our thematic unit on animals that are well-known to English learners. The word familiar has interesting roots, and those apply to today's show as well. The word familiar is tied to the concept of family, and today we're looking at animals that are often considered part of our families. The word for this category of animal is pets. So today's show has everything to do with pets. The most common pet in the United States is dogs, also known as man's best friend. Dogs provide companionship, love, affection, protection, and fun. They are very adaptable to the lives that humans lead. But having pets demands some caring on our parts. These dogs, for example, give all the gifts mentioned above. But they also receive good food, a clean and comfortable shelter, space in which to thrive, and the playful interaction you see here. Let's view a video clip about caring for your pets. Now, until this episode, most video clips on this program were produced by me. Well, the following clip, however, is from Dade County, Florida. I'll post its YouTube link on my website, letscreate.org. Let's see how much English you understand in this video clip. Friendship, fun, love. Pets give us so much, but unlike their wild animal cousins, they can't take care of themselves. Just like kids rely on their parents, Pets need people to provide for their basic needs, too. We're talking about things like food and water, shelter and identification, potty needs, health care, exercise, and grooming. Before bringing home a new dog or cat, there are things you need to know to make sure your pet becomes a happy and healthy member of your family. All pets need food and water. Most animals need to be fed once or twice every day. Find out from your veterinarian or pet supply store what kind of food you should give them. Never ever give your pet table scraps. People food, especially chocolate, may taste good, but it can make your pet very sick. And here's something really important. Make sure your pet always has a bowl of fresh, clean water available so they can get a drink. Next is shelter and identification. If your dog or cat spends a lot of time outside, they need a place to get out of the hot sun in the summer or cold and rain in the winter. A fenced yard with a doghouse or other shelter is great for dogs and provides a safe environment for your pet. It is not okay to tie or chain your dog in the yard. That's called tethering and it is against the law in Miami-Dade County. Remember, dogs are pack animals by nature. Your family is their pack and they want to be with you as much as they can. It's cruel to tie them up and leave them alone outside and it can lead to aggressive behavior. Animals that are treated like a part of your family are better adjusted and will have a closer bond with you. Did you know that a collar and tag are more than just cool fashion accessories? Your pet can't tell his name or where he lives. So every pet needs a collar with their license tag and an ID tag that they wear all the time. If your pet ever gets lost, that little ID tag is just like their ticket back home to you. Ask your veterinarian about a microchip too. Just like us, Pets need a place where they can go to the bathroom. For dogs, that means outside, so be prepared to take them out for frequent walks. 
and clean up after them. No one wants to step in your dog's poop, so scoop it up and throw it out. Indoor cats use a litter box as a bathroom, and like the bathroom you use, it needs to be kept clean. You want your pet to be around a long time, so don't forget about his health care needs. Pets need regular checkups with the veterinarian, just like we need annual checkups with the doctor. If you're bringing home a new dog or cat, one of the first things you should do is to take it to the vet to get a thorough checkup along with the necessary vaccinations. To keep your pet healthy, give them plenty of exercise. You need to walk, run, or play fetch with your dog every day. It's fun and it's good for them, and for you. Cats, especially if they live indoors, also love quality playtime with you, and they benefit from the workout. Grooming keeps your pet's coat healthy and looking great. Regular combing or brushing helps cats have fewer hairballs and shed less. Dogs should be brushed often and have a bath about once a month. And don't forget to brush their teeth. Seriously, tooth decay can lead to many other health problems. As you can see, pets really need us to take care of them. It's a big responsibility. They need food and water every day, shelter and identification, don't forget the collar and ID tag, a place to go to the bathroom, health care, including vet checkups, grooming, tooth brushing, and plenty of exercise. And there's one more thing to add to the list, respect and kindness. Just like you, pets have the right to be treated with respect and kindness. They thrive on your attention and affection. So make sure your pet knows how much you love them. Give them plenty of hugs, kisses, ear scratches, and belly rubs. The more love you give, the more love they'll give back to you in return. Once you're ready to get a pet, consider adopting a shelter pet from Miami-Dade Animal Services. Hundreds of lovable dogs and cats are looking for loving forever homes, like yours. Brought to you by Miami-Dade County Public Schools and the Miami-Dade County Animal Services Department. Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English. Let's take a look at your experience in viewing the previous video clip. Did the narration seem too fast, too slow, or just right? Did you understand the narration easily, or was it a struggle? Did you find yourself translating the words into your home language, or did the English lead directly to the concepts? Now, all these questions can help you informally assess your comprehension level of English. I suggest you write the answers to these questions in your notebook and add the approximate percentage of the video clip you understood for comparison with similar clips in the future. Include the date, the episode, which is number 38, and the name of the clip, which is Pet Care Basics. There's more to come about pets. We'll be right back, right after this. Is it true that ramping up your English is going to the dogs? Yes, it is. And cats, horses, rabbits, geese, jaguars, and more. Join us in our new unit on animals. Ramping Up Your English is for intermediate English learners from all language backgrounds and all ages. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher levels of English proficiency. Our new thematic unit is animals. This science unit helps viewers advance in language functions that will stretch their English skills and learn a few things from dogs as well. Openness, trust, faithfulness, loyalty, playfulness and more. The, the, the qualities that we as humans really do need to learn and to have in our lives on a daily basis because they deliver such beautiful rewards. Ramping up your English can be seen on the Ashland Home Network on channels 15 and 115. It's on channel 182 on Charter Cable in the rest of Southern Oregon. Join us for better English and a grand time with animals. Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English, an instructional support program for intermediate level learners of all ages and from all language backgrounds improving their English. I'm your host, John Letts, and this is segment two of episode 38. Our thematic unit is animals, and today we feature pets. Now, the use of the word pet in the previous video clip could cause confusion, as when the narrator said to be sure to pet your pet. That's because the word pet can be different parts of speech. 
As mentioned earlier, a pet is an animal that has an emotional and often physical connection with the person. Used this way, the word pet is a noun, and nouns name people, places, things, ideas, and concepts. The word pet is also a verb, a word that communicates action. Stroking the fur of a tame animal is petting. So to pet your special furry friend means to stroke its coat. When you do that, you're petting your pet. Now in recent episodes, we've touched on some basic English phonics skills, taking advantage of some animal names that feature short vowel sounds. Our first venture was with the word cat, a word with many rhyming words using the same short vowel sound and ending in the T sound. Well, we then used the word can to further practice the short A sound. In both cases, we found a long list of rhyming words. These word groups are called word families, and exploring word families is a good way to grow your vocabulary. We also found a word family rhyming with dog, so by now you've practiced the short A and the short O sound. Now let's use another vowel today. The word pet has the short E sound, and we can use the same method as before to find members of the word family. As before, we begin at the start of the alphabet. Our first consonant is the letter B, which gives us the rhyming word bet. Bet means to wager. People bet on a horse race, for example, and even dog races. In the word bet, the middle letter E is pronounced the same as the E in pet, the E sound. Now, we have to go all the way to G to find the next word in this family. It's the word get, as in to obtain something. Get also means to understand, as in I get the joke. When we reach the letter J, we have another rhyming word, jet, a type of airplane. The letter L gives us let, meaning to allow, as in my parents let me borrow the car. And um, then there is met, the past tense of meet, and net, an object used to catch fish, among other things. And then set, putting something in place, as in, I set the fishing gear in the boat. Tet, an important holiday in Vietnam, the word vet can be short for veterinarian, an animal doctor, and someone whom you'll bring your pet to, and veteran, someone who has served the country in the armed forces. The letter W gives us wet, having moisture, and Y gives us the word yet, a word that can take the place of but and however, as a conjunction, and can also mean already, as in the dreaded vacation question, are we there yet? Simple words like pet tempt me to delve slightly into the, word of phon the world of phonics, so you can begin to pronounce some English words when reading. By no means is this a complete phonics instruction, which is far beyond the scope of this program. It's more a taste of phonics that may give you some knowledge to expand to more difficult reading tasks. We'll probably do one more of these. These word families will be listed on my website, letscreate.org. I've also included a link to starfall.com, a website well-suited for learning the phonics, the basics of phonics in English. If you look up the words in that word family list, you'll have the start of your own English vocabulary list. These are words you've looked up in the dictionary. The idea is to help you pronounce English words when you're reading. Now, pronouncing words is an important skill, but knowing their meaning is the real goal. Now let's take a look at some of the words we're using in this unit. Animals, that's our theme. Think of them as living things that move. Wild, not tamed by people, living by their natural instincts. Tamed, the opposite, an animal's behavior influenced by humans. Domesticated, it's kind of like tamed, often involving using a service. Pet, an animal with a close relationship with people. And we'll add feral, a series, uh, species, I mean, that's normally domesticated, living as if it were wild. And we'll add stray to the list, 
a pet that has no longer has a home. And then there's the animals that we have seen so far, horse, cat, and dog. Now we'll add to this list as we go further into the unit. I suggest dedicating a few pages to your notebook to vocabulary. So that's a place you can go look up words without going to the dictionary. When it comes to the kinds of animals we've referred to, it's important to realize that these groups are not absolute. Some of them overlap. A fish could be kept as a pet, but it's unlikely to show much affection. Most fish are wild. An unadapted stray cat can turn feral. A um, service animal may be part of the family and treated as a pet. You see how all that works. So in segment three, we'll see a video clip about a program in Southern Oregon that trains dogs to help people who can't hear. This ends segment two. We'll be back with segment three after this. What's a horse doing on ramping up your English? We're galloping toward a new unit, animals. So we're in the country meeting some horses. Horses are just one of the many animals that will help viewers ramp up their English. So funny. Our Mr. Cowboy, you loving that? Horses, boy, I'm, I'm getting the flies. You see, horses have to deal with flies. Coming soon to RVTV Voices, a new unit on ramping up your English, an educational support program for intermediate level English learners from all language backgrounds. So how can horses help you improve your English? Watch Ramping Up Your English to find out on channels 15 and 115 in Ashland and channel 182 on Charter Cable in Southern Oregon. Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English. We use a content-based approach to helping intermediate level English learners improve their English. If that's you, you're in the right place to ramp up your English. This is segment three of episode 38. A deaf person is someone who can't hear. An organization called Dogs for the Deaf trains dogs to help people who can't hear. The following video by Table Rock Productions is about that organization. Let's take a look and see how much you understand. Nestled at the foot of Lower Table Rock in beautiful Central Point, Oregon, is the headquarters for Dogs for the Deaf, one of the oldest hearing dog training centers in the world. At Dogs for the Deaf, we've been helping people live safer, more independent lives since 1977. When I boil water, I could leave it on the stove for hours because I can't hear it boil. When I would do the laundry, I would forget. I put something in the washing machine and it could stay there for days. I could water my yard for three days because I couldn't hear the water running. If I invited somebody for dinner or if somebody was going to drop something off or anything, I would stand and watch out the window to see when they arrived. I would not hear the doorbell. I would not hear them knock. So a lot of my life was watching the door. <laughs> The mission of Dogs for the Deaf is to professionally train dogs to help people and enhance lives while maintaining a lifelong commitment to all the dogs we rescue and the people we serve. The majority of our hearing dogs are rescued from shelters and humane societies. We search for dogs between one and three years old that are friendly, energetic, confident, motivated by toys, responsive to treats, and of course, who love affection. Once at our facility, our dogs go through approximately six months of individualized professional training with positive reinforcement and lots of love. At the end of training, our assistance dogs are then personally delivered by their trainers to their new homes throughout the United States. Cheers. 
just been amazing how much, how much life has changed. Now I don't have to stand and watch the door to see if somebody's coming by and it's, it's really been amazing. Dogs for the Deaf also trains program assistance dogs to work with and assist professionals such as teachers, counselors, and physicians who help people with a variety of needs and challenges. These dogs provide a calming or motivating effect, helping the professional better serve their students or clients and achieve better outcomes. Hey Nelson, do you like Perseus? Why can you tell if you like Perseus? I like Nelson because um, he's nice and um, he's a very lovable dog and he's changed my life, life around. We've usually had really overwhelming days at school but then when Nelson came, he, he was there right beside me when I needed him. I think most kids um, just feel a little bit more at ease or at home. He gives really good eye contact. I think that's really comforting to them. He's gentle, he's slow, he's calm, he's always wagging his tail. You know, he just brings that sense of everything's gonna be okay. Some kids even have fine motor difficulties, so I'll have them put his jacket on, I'll have them put his leash on, I'll have them walk him. Dogs for the Deaf is also revitalizing our autism assistance dog program using our years of experience to help improve the lives of families with children on the autism spectrum. As a nonprofit, we rely on the generosity of individuals, service organizations, and businesses to help us improve the quality of life for thousands of people nationwide. When I tell people that I've been given a trained dog with the kind of training that he's gotten and the kind of personality he has, that that was given to me to use in my classroom, people, people are just amazed. Um, there aren't too many organizations, as you know, that have the kind of sponsors you have that, that gift us with the animals that um, really has changed my life. She just goes everywhere with me. She's been to the symphony twice. She's been to numerous plays. She's been to ball games. She's been everywhere. And she's just wonderful. She and I are peas in a pod. She's an independent girl and she's ready to go for any adventure. And she's just, um, she's just perfect for me. With your support, Dogs for the Deaf will continue to be a premier national provider of professionally trained assistance dogs for years to come. We are so proud to have this program in Southern Oregon. If you're interested in learning more about Dogs for the Deaf, I'll have a link to their website on my website, which is letscreate.org. Our earlier clip about pet care was from a county in Florida, but we have animals that need adoption in Southern Oregon as well. Both Jackson and Josephine counties have animal shelters, and of course, there's the organization CATS that helps stray cats get adopted. No matter where you live, there are animals in needs of good, loving homes and programs to help that progress. I have a few questions about the video clip on Dogs for the Deaf. Did you notice the words that were written on the screen? Did these help you understand the narration you were hearing? The video components of the clip provided good context for understanding the narration. The words on the screen may have helped as well. Now, how much do you remember from that? Can you say in either English or your home language what Dogs for the Deaf is all about? Can you explain how these dogs are trained and how they help people with certain needs? If you find that the content of this program is easy to understand, then you're on firm foundation for the material that will follow and will likely challenge your comprehension skills. My recommendation is to continue watching our episodes in this unit. Now, if you found this experience frustrating, my advice is to repeat the episode. Information on how to access our program follows shortly. If you're a new viewer and you're struggling, I recommend beginning with our first episode on trains and railroads. Uh, after those 32 episodes, you may find these lessons easier to understand. As our instruction today will be 
on my website, letscreate.org. You can also watch and even download today's program, our episode 38, on archive.org slash details slash rogue TV. You're looking for ramping up your English. Clip on the click, I mean, on the ramping up your English sidebar on the right or click on my name, John Letts. Watch channels 15 or 115 on the Ashland Home Network or on channel 182 on Charter Cable in Southern Oregon for ramping up your English. We're on 8 o'clock on Mondays and 7.30 on Thursday evenings. Channels and showtimes may be different in different areas of the country. I want to thank my energetic and talented crew, RVTV staff, and I want to thank you for watching. See you next time on Ramping Up Your English. I'm John Letts. You've been watching Ramping Up Your English, a support program for intermediate level English language learners. Learn more. Visit our website at letscreate.org. You can also watch or download today's program at archive.org slash details slash rogue TV. Join us next time on RVTV Voices for Ramping Up Your English.